We've reached the XFL Championship, Arlington Renegades versus the DC Defenders. We've got Showdown. Hey, Ellie, this is uh, a little bit of a throwback for us, right? Not bad, Absolutely, huh? Absolutely, man. We've got a special guest, Scott Jordamus. This is going to be a fun show. Let's do it. It's time! Well, what is up, guys? Welcome to the Edge DFS. My name is Tyson Smith, joined by Ellie Hernandez and Scott Jordamus. Scott, what's going on with you, man? How you doing? Good, good. It's been a kind of a crazy last three weeks of the season, but aside from that, I'm doing pretty good. It's been an overall good time for XFL this year, I think. I think, I think it's back. Ellie, what are you up to, man? We got a Suns game coming on tonight. Uh, this is a Tuesday that we're recording. We're recording a little bit earlier in the week uh, with our schedules. I don't see a lot of issues with uh, injuries coming up, but uh, just so you guys know, this is a Tuesday night. Ellie, what's going on with you, man? Uh, nothing. And honestly, uh, we're just going to bypass this. Nobody gives a shit what's going on with my life. Let's be honest. We're gamblers here. <laughs> Scott, uh, you told me a funny fucking story. Why don't you have that at in front of your name there? <laughs> Because the, so the last time uh, a couple people hit me up and they're like, "Hey man, I'm following you on Twitter." I'm like, "Dude, that's that's uh, that's not me." So I had to tell them I, you know, uh, I don't have a Twitter for Scott Radomis. There is a person named at Scott Radomis, so don't follow him. It's it's, well, uh, it's my DK name. Well, might, maybe follow him. Who fucking knows? Yeah. Just, Join the it, Discord it is, and then we can all chat. Join yeah, the there Discord. You go. You know? Yeah, Join exactly, Discord. exactly. Do that so, instead of follow. So uh, Scott, thoughts on this season overall um, when it comes to DFS? XFL. Do you think this was a success for everybody? Are you looking forward to it next year again? Um, are you going to dive as deep? Like, is there going to be an edge next year again? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I wish LA still had a team. That's first of all. Yeah. So I could go to some games because uh, Texas is pretty far. But, you know, overall, I think it's successful. I've been looking at the ratings. I think, um, you know, uh, it's going to be, you know, I think it's back. I mean, I, I really enjoyed the 2020 version before it got cut short. I think uh, I think we're looking pretty good for it. So I, I think it's good. It's just a matter of getting people to play spring football on DFS. Right now, you know, even uh, USFL is struggling. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. And, and, and I, I will tell you this. The games have been exciting this year. The rules are great. I think the NFL is going to implement some of these rules. Yeah. Um, I really do. Uh, so, yeah. I, and I think we saw some really good players this year that might make some rosters. And at the end of the day, you know, when we start getting into best ball and NFL DFS, we have a little bit of a leg up on with some of these dudes that might might actually go from the XFL into the NFL. We already know we already know these guys and we know what they're capable of. Um, uh, hey, nice uh, Orlando Guardian shirt there, man. That's that's actually my team right right down the street from me. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I grew up in Orlando, so I'm going to rep the Guardian since L.A. doesn't have the Wildcats. Anymore, there you go. So. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about briefly. If people are just joining us on this show and they've been playing, you know, main slate, the four gamer this whole year, and they haven't really dabbled too much into showdown. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, Ellie, uh, Ellie, we'll start with you. And I want to hear about from Scott, like the biggest thing we need to focus on for showdown uh, for XFL and, and kind of the, some of the differences between NFL and XFL showdown. So uh, I think the biggest thing for me when it comes to um, XFL showdown is uh, in NFL, you have kind of a cluster of players that you know are just going to dominate the slate entirely, right? Um, with the XFL, I think the one consistent message that uh, at least I've learned this entire season is don't get buried to any one player. Like, uh, as much as you love a guy, there is a world where they're just not going to fucking show up. Like, I, and you know, it's something that you got to be aware of. And uh, I mean, we started the season off with that, right, Tyson? I mean, you, you threw in. Uh, I mean, you faded. You faded uh, the, the chalkiest quarterback on the slate and ended up winning a bunch of money because of that. Luis Perez. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> which is funny because now we're going to come back on this show and we're going to. This is going to be the Luis Perez show. Oh yeah. At least for me and Scott, because I'm with Scott 100. percent I haven't talked much uh, Tyson much about it, but oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, and we're going to get back into that, and I think we're going to talk about that a little bit on the show tonight, right? It is not how do we how do we play Luis Perez enough that we like him, but we're not we're not a hundred percent locked into him uh, having a perfect game. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, we're right there. So Scott, you were, t you were telling us before we went on, you know, before we started recording this, you're, you're seeing a lot of trends. You did a ton of work beforehand. You've looked at a lot of numbers. You've looked at a lot of slates. You're basically saying that, look, you know, fade the quarterback at your own risk, but if you choose to, and they, and they get benched or they get hurt, you are going to win something, right? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, so far ownership wise, we're looking at 80 plus percent on each quarterback throughout the season. I mean, it's just kind of a, 
slightly different than NFL where we might fade a quarterback. Um, you know, in, in this scenario, we do have a tricky situation with uh, Tiamo and Derek King because there's a two quarterback system there. And I don't think, uh, you know, we're going to see that on the Perez side of things. But yeah, in general, uh, if you do fade a quarterback or both quarterbacks, you're going to have a unique build because as ownership has shown for the year, for the season, that uh, everybody plays pretty much both quarterbacks. Yeah, absolutely. And to me, it feels like with the XFL, once again, like no player is really a lock. Like on paper, they could be like 100%. Like this guy is going to pay off a thousand dollar dude starting at quarterback. Uh, they're not, they're not a lock like ever. Um, just because of how crazy the XFL is and how these, co- we don't have a lot of information. A lot of these coaches decide to do things beforehand. We don't know even who's traveling with the team sometimes. So that's a little bit of a scary thing to talk about. Like with, with, with showdown, I have no problem locking dudes in for NFL. I mean, it's a little bit scary, but like some of these dudes, like Lamar Jackson at captain, I'm just going to lock him at captain and, and, and try to get as many different variations. I'm not going to do anything crazy like that, you know, with XFL showdown. At least I don't think so. But we'll get a little bit more into that here in a second. Uh, let's look at um, let's look at the the line here. This is a terrible graphic. I, I got to apologize for this. Um, uh, Arlington Renegades uh, uh, plus six and a half. This is a forty eight total, and DC is minus two fifty five. I, I see a world where Arlington can can keep this close. And I mean, would it be crazy to say that Arlington could win this game? Scott, what do you think? I don't think think that's crazy. I mean, what what did we just see, right? I mean, didn't these two teams just play a couple weeks ago with Luis Perez? And what was it, Scott? I think his second game. It might have been his first. It was. It was. Yeah. No. He he he, yeah. He had a little bit of work in a week eight, and then came in to full on week nine when these guys played, and it was a double overtime. Right? It was one of those crazy overtime games. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. So it 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 seems to me like. DC is the obvious favorite. Um, I think they can come out here and dominate this game, but I I don't think you can like Arlington is hitting their stride at the perfect time. This is like a you know like a New York Giants Super Bowl type type team where they you know they were just average and they hit their stride and and they can win this game. So I really do think that most people are going to be leaning towards the the four two the two four like four DC defenders five DC defenders in the, in your lineup. And I think even if even if you just do like a like a two four or three threes when it comes to stacking, it might make you different enough. Um, it's really hard to tell right now because we, we're never going to have ownership. We barely have projections, so we got to kind of figure that out. But but earlier like last week, I crunched a ton of lineups. And Scott, you said you crunched a ton as well. What were you seeing? What were some of the trends you were seeing when you were crunching? So just to compare to week nine and week nine, uh, top three true optimals were uh, 4-2 Arlington, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, that was the actual uh, optimals. Now, with if you crunch these, uh, this this championship, it's leaning 4-2 uh, DC. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's again, you know, whether, whether it's a 3-3 bill to, to, to play it safe, um, you know, it's, I'm leaning Arlington. That's my my case. I definitely think that DC is the way to go, but I think the ownership is going to show that. Um, yes. So I, I like Arlington as a sneaky uh, 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 team to win it here, maybe. Who yeah. Knows? And look, at the end of the day, Ellie, our goal is to win for like hit first place. Like, because if you don't hit first place, you might not right. profit, especially on a showdown slate. And hit first place w- w- with enough uniqueness that you're not splitting it 50 different ways. Um, so right. to me, I mean, we just saw it the other night, right? I mean, uh, the, if you're, uh, we just said it's Tuesday night. If you played NBA Showdown last night on Monday, but like May, I don't even know the fucking date. Never mind. But if you played it last <laughs> night, you you chopped up first place on a a hundred kid at first contest, a fifteen dollar entry, yeah, and you got what four hundred bucks, five hundred bucks. That's not worth it. Like I'd met, rather yeah. lose my, you know, my. Five hundred dollars in entries or whatever I'm entering, and have an opportunity to solo ship these contests. And honestly, XFL, like we said in the in, in the intro here, XFL, you can do that. There is the opportunity for one dude to break the fucking slate, and we've seen that pretty much every week. And if you maxed if you maxed that slate, you lost money, even though you hit first place. So you know right. it, it's it, it's 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 interesting. That's what that's what showdown's hard, man. Showdown can be difficult. You can rip your hair out. Uh, Scott, what are before we actually get into this? I I, I know I keep stalling here, but I want to talk about. The, the the top contest here um what is it is it 20 bucks up top and what is it 20k it's, 
Yeah, it's 20K. It's a top heavy contest. It's 75K overall, 20K to first, $20 entry fee. Right now, we're about 1,300 entries out of 4,400. So, um, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I like it because I, I always like top heavy contests. I know that it, it's kind of not good for min cashing, but, um, you know, I think, uh, it's a good contest to enter, and I I don't think it's gonna fill. So oh. uh, let's get some overlay. Hey, there you go. And we got the two 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 back. That's that's not that's not bad. All right, let's let's. We do. We have the two two back. That's great. Yes. Yeah, five k yes. to first on that. Five k to first. I'll on take that. it. And Definitely was it a three max? Well. Is it three max? Right. It is. Yeah. All right. Let's get into injuries here. Yeah, just pain. It was pain everywhere. All right, so Victor Bolden, um, look, we don't have the exact status as far as questionable or probable. They don't give that to us until a little bit later in the week, but we can kind of make some educated guesses based on these guys. It seems like most dudes are probably going to play. Victor Bolden, uh, unfortunately, is going to play because I'm going to have to lose all my money playing him. He was uh, He's a full practice. Letty Brown looks like he's full practice. I misspelled that. Oops. Uh, Rennell Hall is a DMP, so, and he's been a DMP quite a bit. So it seems to me like maybe Rennell Hall is is one of the guys that we might be missing out on, which boosts some other uh, some of these other wide receivers. Debion Smith looks to be he- healthy-ish. Um, he has a shoulder slash ankle in- injury. One thing about Debion Smith, we know he's going to leave the game at least two or three times, um, and, and you're going to hold your breath because he's going to be sixty five percent owned, and you're going to you know close your laptop a couple times probably. So uh, you know he's been in full practice. Hopefully he can stay healthy for this game. Tyler Vaughn's. Lower leg injury has been at full practice. And, and, and the biggest name on here clearly is Abram Smith. He was beat up a little bit at the end of that game. We, we saw some Cameron Harris touchdowns, you know, with him, with him kind of sitting on the bench or what, for whatever reason. He has an ankle injury. He was limited Monday, but full practice Tuesday. It looked like last week he was sort of similar. Um, so what, do, what jumps out to you here, Ellie? Um, I mean, Obviously, this stuff all changes. So, you know, down to that hour-ish before lock, hour and a half, you really got to stay on your toes because we don't have enough information to really know who's going to be in or out, and it could change a lot. As of now, it seems like we're okay. seems like Rennell Hall might be out, but what jumps out to you here, man? You know, if Devion Smith is out, or, you know, what do we do if Devion Smith is out or one of these other dudes? So um, I, this might be a kind of a cop out answer to your question, but uh, I, I fully expect everybody to play. Um, uh, I think your point about Renell Hall might be the biggest. Um, if he continues to not practice, he's probably not going to end up playing. But if these guys want to get on a practice squad, if they want the opportunity to try and even make an NFL team, like they're showing up for the championship game, like they're going to play if their ankle's broken. Like I, you know, this is the NFL. You're going to, or this is the XFL. You're going to be able to like the rock. He's got access to some pretty good tour at all. Like he's going to help you get back <laughs> into the game. Right. Like I, I think these guys are all going to play. So I don't think it's worth spending too much time here. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to really answer your question, join the discord guys. Um, we're going to have that information literally up to the minute. Uh, we we I, I, we broke the news uh, in, in our Discord about somebody being out like an hour before the slate uh, uh, with uh, what was it AJ McCarron? Yeah, it was AJ McCarron not being on the fucking plane. Yeah. So um, you know we we had that in the Discord. We all made our changes and we ended up at least you know min cashing <laughs> a little <laughs> bit because of that. So join the Discord and we'll be able to break this down a little bit more as we get closer to lock with that accurate information. What jumps out to you here, Scott? Anything to worry about? Uh, no, I just think if uh, Fresnel Hall is out uh, and Victor Bolden is in, uh, Victor Bolden looks pretty good. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. Smith's like 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 Ellie said, everybody's going to play. Uh, the NFL is watching. Camp invites are happening. Yeah. everybody's going to play. But I think Hall probably does not play, in my opinion. I mean, look, there's still there's still a, almost a, you know five days for him to get back. But yeah, Bolden, he's been weird. If you looked at last week's injury report, he like didn't practice, then practiced in full, then didn't practice. It was kind of weird. Yeah, he's been weird for the last couple of weeks. So if you play Bolden, play him with extreme caution. But we did get a little glimpse of him and Luis Perez, I believe, and it looked pretty good. So. Yeah, it did. All right, let's get into this breakdown. We're going to go position by position, talk about all these players, all the prices, who we like, who we don't like. Then we're going to get into our captains, our fades, and we're going to build a bunch of lineups together as much as we can. We're going to hand build. Let's get into this. Break it down. All right, guys. So let's start with QB. So we got Jordan Te'amu is 10.8K. Luis Perez is 10K. Clearly, those guys are going to be incredibly high owned, uh, both at captain and in the flex. And then we got, look, we got some other guys to talk about. De'Ara King is 7K. Um, earlier in the year, maybe he was a little bit of a better play. 
Um, now he's not quite getting as many reps, but he's still a guy that you you should look at, look at especially on a showdown slate. Uh, Hickenbottom, I'm not super interested in. Uh, the one guy to talk about is Kelly Bryant here. We did see a little bit of Kelly Bryant in that last game for Arlington, and he was kind of the run guy. Maybe we see some red zone opportunities for a guy like Kelly Bryant. Scott, what are your thoughts here? Let's talk about some of these uh, backup quarterbacks, if anybody jumps out to you. And then we can kind of talk about our strategy for these main quarterbacks here. Yeah, so King, King, we know what King is. King is uh, uh, he's the best backup in the league, basically. He should be starting. But, uh, you know, he's a heavy rusher, so, you know, we know what King is. It's, it's, it's Bryant, like you said, is the wild card. In the game that they played together, Bryant did get a couple rushes. They have implemented him. They were trying to kind of do – what DC does actually when they were playing against him, they're like, okay, you guys got two quarterbacks. We're going to yeah. throw Bryant out there. So Bryant could be an option. This could be a Marcus Mariota situation. If you guys remember that during the NFL season, but th- this, this could happen, but uh, yeah, Br- Bryant is, you know, a, a high, high flyer, but, but King, King is, King is someone you can incorporate. King has showed up in optimals a handful of times. So uh, we know what King and Tiamo has showed up in optimals together. Uh, the Tyson lineup that uh, he hit the big showdown, uh, they were in there together. So, yeah. um, you know, King King is who he is. But Brian, yeah, you got to look out for it. I think the one issue here is, you know, 7K, there's a lot of value that we can talk about on the slate. Um, this may be a situation if you're going to play a De'Aaron King or Kelly Bryant, you just got to leave a lot of money on the table p- potentially. But I just don't know how, that I'm super, super interested. I'll sprinkle them in like one or two lineups maybe, but I'm not going to go too crazy with De'Aaron King this week. Um, and not really Kelly Bryan either. I might not have any. Um, that's just being honest. So, Ellie, what are your thoughts on Tayamu and Perez here? To me personally, like barring injury, I'm not going to get too cute. Tayamu, you're going to have to get exposure to him at captain because of his rushing upside. If he scores two rushing touchdowns and, and like a, and he runs in a, a two-point conversion or something, he's going to be the optimal captain most likely. And we've seen it. We'll ha- we have some data here that Scott will show you once we get to the lineup build. The dude's in the optimal lineup almost every time he plays. What now? The, the the question is: Do we do you put him at captain or or in the flex? What are you doing here with Tiamu? You you probably don't want to get too cute, right? Yeah, man. Um, look, so uh, I think uh, I think these are both guys you need to have in pretty much every build. Uh, I, if you're setting rules, uh, min one, <laughs> I think is the way to go. But I'm probably going to have uh, both these guys in most lineups. And they're not priced crazy, right? So you can still play a decent amount of them at captain. And I don't think you're getting... Um, you know, I don't think you're being too weird or you're doing anything too chalky because these guys are going to be pretty high owned at the captain spot as well. Now, I think you can kind of manage some of your risk by not necessarily playing maybe as much Abram Smith at captain. Um, and that's that's probably the, the, the route that I'm going to take just because like the upside that Perez and Tom will offer you on top of the, the, you know, just the big games passing, like even Luis Perez can get some rushing uh, volume. If he sneaks in if, with a, you know, a, a one point or a two point conversion, like that shit starts to add up. So look, uh, these guys are going to be the core of every build. And then from there kind of just working in different pieces to get weird is, is, is how I'm going to go. Um, I don't mind getting a little bit of exposure to Eric King. I don't think I'm going to get any uh, 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 Kelly Bryant this week though. Yeah. I mean, look, one, one thing, um, with with Te'amu is you can not quite naked but like you you don't have to put two or three pass catchers with him if he's in the captain spot I mean realistically maybe you want to get a Lucky Jackson maybe you want to get a Blair or a Hammond or one of these tight ends potentially but like you could stack him with Abram Smith you could st- you can throw you could throw Cameron Harris with him um because of his rushing upside what are you doing Scott here like are you going to be under on Te'amu a captain and just jam him in the flex like where do you go with this I mean, most of my builds are going to have both QBs and most of my builds will have one of the QBs in captain. I think it's just kind of obvious when you look at just the, the projections to what they put up every week, they're safe. Their floor is safe. Um, if, if an injury happens, so be it. Like you guys said, like I, I'm probably not going to play much of King or, or Bryant. They'll be sprinkled in in case, but you know, like I said, the Mariota thing, but in general, uh, I'll eat it if an injury happens, but I'm going to have both in the majority of my lineups and I'm going to have uh, a, a lot of each one of them as captain. What do you think Perez's uh, ownership at captain is going to be if you had to take a guess? 
I think Prez is going to be a lot lower than Tiamu. I think Tiamu right now, offensive player of the year, um, you know, they've gotten a lot more, um, I think, ABC games, like channel set, you know, like the, the, like the local games. Yeah. So you haven't had to search for it. So I think Tiamu is going to be double. Luis Perez captain ownership. And, you know, Perez going up against this DC pass defense, man, am I, is this, am I just recency biasing the hell out of this? Like, I love him at captain in this game. Like, am I, am I alone here? No, he's, he's probably one of my favorite captains. Um, I'm going to be a little bit uh, more NFL uh, uh, nostalgic on this for my captain, but I love Luis Perez, man. All right, let's, let's go to running back here. So Abram Smith is 10.6K. Now going up against this Arlington defense, man, this is probably the best defense in the league. If you really, if you really look at the numbers, um, they've been, you know, I, I don't actually, does anybody have that up? Um, I, I meant to look this up. How did Abram Smith do in week nine against them, against uh, Arlington? Uh, I got it right here. So Abraham Smith, um, let's see here. He did... Uh, he put he put a five point two fantasy points. I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> at at eleven hundred. Uh, no, uh, uh, eleven thousand. He put yeah. up uh, eight point six. He put up eight point six fantasy points at eleven thousand. And um, and he was is sixty two percent owned. And that's not going to cut it. It's just not going to cut it. No. And and to me, I know this sounds crazy, but man, I might be under the field on him in the flex. Um, I just don't see a pass unless he gets like three or four goal line carries. I just don't see a path where he gets a hundred yard game unless he has one long ass run or something. Um, Abram Smith at probably 60, 70, 80% owned probably at 10.6 K. I might be like at under the half the field. And then I'll jam him into captain maybe a little bit more in case he has one of these nuclear games. We got to talk about Abram Smith first, because I don't think you have to play him. Am I alone on this, Scott? Not at all. Yeah. So he had, he had 10 carries for 27 yards rushing and he caught, uh, he caught three balls for 29 yards, um, on three targets. Um, no. And I think after last week, uh, you know, seeing Cameron Harris, uh, I, I, I honestly think that guy, uh, is gonna vulture some goal line touches. And, I mean, yeah. it, it reminds them when they got rid of Armstead, we were all like, oh, it's Puka season, and that never <laughs> happened. And even when they didn't have to play the game, they still just kept playing Abraham Smith. It was yeah. weird. Yeah. But I I I I honestly think uh Cameron Harris is a goal line threat no matter what. Yes. So is Derek King. So yes. you know, you've got a, a couple things going against Abraham Smith. You've got Teamu, Cameron Harris. Derek King and random wide receivers running end arounds and things like that that can yeah. steal touchdowns from Abram Smith. So to me, yeah. like and Renegades defense and Renegades <laughs> defense, man, they will uh, like they're they're badasses, man. These guys <laughs> are not going to allow a lot of rush yards. So to me, uh, that's the key is Abram Smith. I think you can be under the field, do it at your own risk. But there, there's the obvious leverage. Don't fade quarterbacks in this in the in this matchup. Just fade Abram Smith if you want to get a little bit different. Um, Devion Smith, 8,400, Letty Brown, 6,600. And then you got a big fall off here. Uh, Harrion, 1,600, Puka Williams, 1K and Cameron Harris, 1K. I mean, convince me somebody, Ellie, convince me not to play Cameron Harris a shitload this week. I mean, he's 1K. He's the goal line guy. Most likely. Uh, I don't think his ownership is going to be very high, even though it probably should be. Yeah, you asked the wrong guy. I'm not going to convince you to do that. You just go to the next position, man. Scott, <laughs> at 1K, the only thing that I can think of is maybe a kicker. Um, again, I do think kickers are going to be viable because these guys are going to take points in a championship game. Outside of that, I'd rather play Cameron Harris. What do you think, Scott? Are you into Cameron, and where do you think you'll come in ownership-wise on him? You would have to be someone who paid attention to last week because he doesn't exist – uh, aside from that, right? He came out of nowhere, right? We didn't even know the guy was on the roster. So yeah, exactly. for me, I, I say that again. No, no, I was saying exactly. You're you're totally right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I think, uh, and we've seen these trends. Um, you know, uh, people. It, it takes them a little bit of time to jump on ownership. We saw it with Butler uh, early in the season. It, even though he was putting up big games, it took people a little bit of time to get on to him. So I, I, I think Cameron Harris at a thousand is a steal, but you would have to kind of know what happened last week in order to play him. Yeah. So I think his ownership will still be fairly low. And I think Abraham Smith 
if anybody remembers that St. Louis game um, and and what he yeah. did, oh, I, yeah. I, I do think he'll be he'll be highly owned. So I think Cameron Harris is a is a good leverage play to a degree. Yeah, and I think you can handcuff Smith and Harris together if you wanted to go that route. Last thing to talk about here for Arlington, Devian Smith. Uh, they have him as a Q tag here. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but he is injured ish. Letty Brown is injured ish. Uh, if Letty Brown's out, I don't think I'm interested in Harry. And he kind of screwed me the last week. He didn't really see a lot of opportunities. Devion Smith is the guy, right? Like, I, I, I'm a little bit scared of him because I think he can have one of these absolute insane games and then he can give you two fantasy points. Um, to me, Devion Smith is a good captain option, and I'm probably going to try to sprinkle him in as much as I can in, in, in the flex. But he's at 8,400. He might kind of get, get forgotten about. I don't know. Ellie, what do you think? Yeah, man. Um, I like him at captain. I like him at the flex spot, too. Um, I think one of the things people forget about him is he does get involved in the pass game. And uh, this is PPR. Just can't forget about uh, the benefits of a uh, running back getting PPR points. So if he has you know, 40 yards and, and five receptions for 12 yards, those five receptions turn into a shitload of points. So um, I like him. Uh, I think I like. You know, I think you're going to have to be weird building. And if you want to do like a two four with Luis uh, Perez at captain, you may be it may be Luis Perez, Devion Smith, and then you run it back for uh, DC defenders. So uh, that that that's the kind of build that I'll be approaching with this week. Last thing, Scott, what do you think about these these Arlington running backs? I like. I mean, Devion Smith's one of the only true bell cow running backs in the XFL. So I like him. His ankle's been bothering him all year. He's played through it. He's a beast. I like him. I think goal line. Even in the game they played uh, uh, against DC, I mean, he had two touchdowns. I think right at the goal line. So he didn't have a lot of yards. He's just that guy. So yeah, yeah. I like Devion Smith a lot, and especially at captain. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go to wide receiver here. Um, so. Quite a few guys to talk about here. Lucky Jackson is the highest price. He's at 9600 Chris Blair, Josh Hammond, those are the highest price guys. And then we have a bunch of Arlington dudes that we are still trying to figure out who is the favorite pass catcher. You you obviously have Sal Canella, who is zero points or 30-point upside, like kind of a guy. It seems to rotate week, week in, week out. But when it comes to Arlington's pass catchers, we saw Javante Payton absolutely go nuclear last week. He's, he's 6K. Do you think that he's going to be like incredibly high owned because he's the only guy that we've seen absolutely go off for Arlington? I think he's going to be high owned. I personally think that man, this it, it's kind of a it's kind of a fish thing to play a shitload of him. Like I might just uncheck him and put him in like two or three captain lineups just in case he goes nuclear. Scott, I think you probably agree with me on this. What do you think? Yeah, he's my favorite. He's my favorite of the game for sure. Uh, recency bias is huge. Um, he had a massive game, one of the biggest games uh, we've seen a receiver have all year. Uh, I am full fading Javante Payton. There's too many receivers on Arlington, anyways. Look at, I mean, there's there's so yeah. many guys. Luis Luis spreads the ball, so yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I'm fading. I'm fading. So, Ellie, thoughts on these uh, DC guys? Because we've seen we've seen pretty much every week lately. You know, it was a little bit slow for them to get their pass game going, but now they have been tearing it up in the pass game. Lucky Jackson is probably going to get a touchdown. Chris Blair is probably going to get a touchdown. Josh Hammond is there. Like, there's these three guys, I feel like you probably want to get at least one of these dudes. Am I crazy on that, Ellie? Absolutely not. Um, I think I'm going to be targeting Lucky Jackson as much as possible. Um, I think he's probably going to be one of the cores of my build. Um, and then Chris Blair. I don't know how much Josh Hammond I'm going to get. That 7600 range is kind of an awkward pricing. Um, and uh, we'll see kind of when we get to the lineup constructions uh, to see if that's that's possible. But uh, look, I like Lucky Jackson and Chris Blair, even a captain. I think they're going to be an option, uh, you know, a great way to kind of like hedge against the Tamu and uh, Perez and even Abram Smith ownership at the captain spot. Uh, if one of those game guys has a two touchdown game and a hundred yards, like they're going to be the optimal captain. And at that price, like I think it gives you a lot of flexibility. So uh, I will have probably a minimum of one of these pass catchers in my lineup. I was excited, a little bit more excited to play Josh Hammond last week because I think he was pretty well priced, but now that he's like at 7,600 and he's just $600 cheaper than Chris Blair, I don't know, Scott. Like, what do you think about this Hammond, Blair, Jackson, Holy Trinity here? What do we do? I mean, I, I like Josh Hammond. He's a Florida Gator, so I, I, I love Hammond here. Um, he's actually – so if I was to break it down, you know, cl clearly Lucky is – has been the guy. He's the name. If you watched any big primetime games, Lucky kind of went off. So I feel like Lucky's going to be 
pretty high owned. And I think when you look at his just box scores, he just looks good. Blair has had those big blow up games. We've known that he's a deep threat. Um, he can come out of nowhere. He could literally be in the third quarter with zero points yeah. and finish the game off with 30. We saw that happen. Um, but I'm actually leaning towards Josh Ham. And the last time they played, he put up 20 fantasy points. I think in the slot, he looks really good. And I do think DC is going to have to throw the ball. So I like all three. I like all three. And I even love some uh, Brandon Smith as well. So I agree with you. I think and DC- the tight ends and the tight oh, ends. Yeah. We'll get there, but I like all it. tight ends. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Now that we're talking about this, I, I think the DC's path to winning this game is Tayamu throwing for 250 yards and two touchdown passes. I think that's the only path, in my opinion, because I don't think that they can run for over 100 yards or 150. They might need 150 um, rush yards to, against this defense, and I just don't. I just don't know if I see it happening. Last thing, Scott, who's your favorite uh, wide receiver here for uh, for Arlington? This is a tough one. Um, so if you break it down and you look at everything on paper, Tyler Vaughn's started off the year hot. Uh, when Perez came in, he kind of fizzled out, and then now he's back. Uh, Winningham is kind of that guy that just can get a goal line touchdown every now and then. Arcanada was supposed to be the guy, and at first we played a lot of him, remember, because him yeah. and Perez have that relationship. Yeah. They worked out all the time. It was like a Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford thing. Yeah. Um, but I like – Vander Esch. That's my guy this week. Caleb Vander Esch, he's been coming on hot towards the end here. He's that little white guy in the slot. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, it's easy to throw to, you know? Yeah. So I just, I think I, he's easy to throw to. I, I'm going Vander Esch. He's my favorite. Yeah, I, I, I like him too. I think he's a nice in a nice spot. All right, so tight end. So Sal Canelo is 7,400. Um, let's first talk about that, all right? So Salcanella, is this going to be one of the games where he shits the bed? Like nobody knows. Flip a coin a hundred times. Uh, who knows? But I think you got to get exposed to him. Do you think that uh, people are feeling a little snake bitten by Salcanella, and maybe he's he's a little bit risky, and maybe his ownership will be in the 20, 30 percent range? Like I don't know. Where, where do you think his ownership's coming in, Scott? I mean, you, you know what I did. That the, As soon as Luis Perez took over, I played 100% Sal Canella. I basically maxed out yes, the four-gamer, and Sal Canella put up a goose egg. Yep. Uh, so I have one of the biggest hits of the whole season, I think, out of anybody uh, I took. But, um, you know, he's, he's been playing better as of late. I mean, you saw it with Luis Perez uh, the last two weeks of the season. He's been going to him in key situations. The coaches love him. He's probably one of the – aside from Latimer, he's – Definitely the, the second best tight end in the in the league. Uh, he's trustworthy. Um, I think he's going to be fairly high owned because I think everybody knows his name, and that's kind of where I'm leaning on ownership. I think, I think, um, I think he'll be the highest owned receiver by far yeah. on uh, Arlington, unless everybody jumps on the recency bias with Peyton. Yeah, and, and he he dresses well too, so there, you know there's an up, there's some upside. So <laughs> yeah. look at the end of the day. DC has three dudes, potentially even four, uh, here that that you can think about playing. Alex Ellis, twenty eight hundred. B. Riley Moore, McKinney, twenty four hundred. Ethan Wolf, twenty two hundred. I think all three of these guys are in play. I don't know that you need to get more than ten percent of each of these guys. Uh, I'm not playing two of them in the same lineup. I think their ceiling is a little bit lower. We saw B. Riley Moore and McKinney have a couple long uh, uh, receptions. Uh, well, maybe it was last week, I think, or it could have been the week before. Anyways, it seems like B. Riley Moore and McKinney is more of that. Pass catching type, Alex Ellis, e- Ethan Wolf. Uh, Ethan Wolf seems to me like kind of that blocking guy, and Alex Ellis is is more of, of the red zone threat. We've seen him get plenty of opportunity down there. Ellie, what do we do with these DC tight ends, man? Like, I just it's so random who who's gonna actually actually score a touchdown, but I think one of them probably scored a touchdown, or at least a couple two point conversions. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think you guys, uh, uh, these are guys that you can work into your lineups just uh kind of across the board uh, i think i'm gonna favor cameron harris just a little bit more just because uh, uh or cameron i don't even know if i got that last name right i can't remember it from slide to slide but anyways like uh he's 1k like so the, the upside's a little bit uh higher for him and the risk isn't as high but uh, i think it's fine to work in ls b riley ethan wolf um that's probably where it cuts off uh, yeah, you you guys can see we got Nate, Sean, and Trey pro- projected from zero. By the way, these uh these projections were were done by Scott, who did an awesome job. These are about in line with what I would expect XFL projections to do. Thanks for doing this, buddy, because we were whooping our own asses trying to update some of these other site stuff. 
They're yeah. very safe projections. Very safe. Yeah, so hey, it's gonna, better than what we you have. Load them up that. and your optimizer. Play it. It should be a safe lineup build. So yeah. So all right, Scott. Uh, last thing on tight ends. Gun to your head. Uh, are you play? Who are you playing out of these three? These three uh, DC guys, or are you just as confused as we are? I mean. I like all three, but LA just convinced me I'd rather play Cameron Harris. I mean, it's just, it's just the truth. It's like, look, if if you if you look at the 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 way it went, Ethan Wolf was the guy to start the season. Uh, Tiamo liked him, and then Alex Ellis kind of came out of nowhere, got a couple goal line touchdowns. Yep. Both Ellis and Moore McKinney has had some huge games. So my prediction still is a tight end from DC will be in the optimal build, but if I'm gonna play it. I'd rather save a, a grand and play uh, Cameron Harris. I totally agree with you, man. All right, so let's talk about defense here. So the defenses are actually priced pretty reasonably. 4600 for the defenders, Renegades 4200. This is a 48 total. Like, can I see, you know, this being a, hitting the under and being a little bit more of a slower game? It's the XFL Championship. They've been two weeks to think about this. Maybe there's some nerves there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I could probably see that. Maybe I, I should get a couple builds that reflect that. But I don't think it act, like you act, absolutely have to like th have this be a low scoring game for any of these uh, defenses to hit their like best score. Defenders, we know that they can that they can score touchdowns. Renegades, one of the best defenses in the league. They they lead the league in interceptions. And defenders, we've seen them plenty of times score touchdowns. As well as Puka Williams at a kickoff return. How many times has he been this freaking close to returning it? D DC defenders get points for that. So, Scott, where are we going with these defenses, man? Are you interested in playing them? And they'll probably be like 10% owned, right? I mean, they're probably going to be pretty low owned. Or am I a little bit, a little bit over exaggerating that? I mean, I think, uh, I mean, you and I both know because we've taken down uh, big contests with uh, double defenses. I think, um, Defenses will be owned. I, I just, if you look at it all season, people have liked to play the defenses. I think what's the over under? I think it's like 48, uh, 48 somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. So, so in my opinion, um, I'm, I always want to shoot out, but I think uh, a Super Bowl type game always goes under. Um, yeah. I, I am definitely going to play both defenses uh, over the field uh, for the sake that both defenses can score. And I think, um, I think there'll be a defensive touchdown uh, in this game for sure. Maybe both defenses score a touchdown. So I will be over the field, but I will not. Uh, I will not force it in. But I, I will be over the field because I do think these defenses are both really good. Uh, DC especially, uh, and Perez can throw picks. Uh, Tiama can throw picks. So I, yeah, I like both defenses. Ellie, where, where are you going here, man? Like pretty well priced, and like I said, there's a lot of different paths for both of these defenses to make the optimal. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I don't mind it. I'm not gonna like go in and actively select the defender's defense into my lineup and then build around it. So if I'm sitting around 4600 and it fits the the roster construction, then I'll play it. Um, just kind of to echo what we said on almost any showdown show, uh, probably don't need to play both. Um, but I think uh, one is in play. All right, let's go to kicker. My cat just opened my door. Um, so can somebody, uh, so you guys talk about these kickers. Russelino is 1K and Nate Becker is 1K. Do, or actually, that's not even right. That's a tight end. Uh, who's the, Mac, Matt, Matt McCrane is 1K. Uh, any interest? Yeah. I mean, I'd rather just play Cameron, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Cameron Harris is probably going to be the the optimal play in in in, in uh, <laughs> comparison to the uh, kickers. Um, but I, if you're running a 150 max, even a, a you know a couple 20 maxes, right? I don't think you're you're um, doing too poor off by having some exposure to both kickers. They are 1K. Um, if, if for whatever reason one coach decides to uh, take points and they saw if they saw out in the red zone. We've seen what happens in, in big games. It, three field goals all of a sudden turns into 12 points. And at 1K, that could be uh, essential. So don't sleep on them, but probably play Cameron Harris. Scott, I mean, Russellino is one of the best kickers in the yeah. league. Um, and, and they stall out in the red zone. I know that now with you know with Perez, it's a little bit different. But, I mean, he could hit 250 yarders in this game. Like, it's totally possible. They're playing in a fucking dome here. Yeah, I mean, I I like I I like Russelino a lot. I mean, he's he's one of my favorite plays on the slate. Um, he, I think it's uh, only two games this whole season he hasn't kicked uh, at least one field goal. Where McCrane, it's been like four or five games. Uh, so 
and, and and like I said, you're you're right. They're gonna get stopped. I I, I think in, in in the in the red zone, and I think they're gonna have to kick. So yeah, I like Ruslino, but again, I think the Cameron Harris thing is just a continuation here. It's just a broken record. I think for a grand, he's got more upside. I mean, I don't see Ruslino kicking like. 10 field goals. You know? yeah. I, I could see Cameron Harris swoop two goal line touchdowns like he did. Yeah. You know, and and right. look, I like what the XFL does um, with their kickers and pricing them at a thousand bucks. I think that's awesome because I'm firmly against kickers in NFL showdown. I, they should get rid of them. We should not even be talking about kickers ever because they're 4,200, 4,600. How many times have we had a kicker in at the captain just randomly destroy the slate in this case for XFL a thousand bucks, you should probably get them involved but we got Cameron Harris at the same price. Uh, all right, so let's get into our captain picks here. This is our crown their ass segment. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. And that's not right. <laughs> uh, we're crowning their ass on DraftKings. Uh, so Scott and I are going Perez. Ellie, you're going Canella. Talk to me about this Canella pick. This is obviously like a tournament slash, you know, like the big contest type thing. But he has the upside and he's, and he's got the PPR there. So what are your thoughts buying Canella here? Um, I mean, just I, I do my best to not put uh, a 20 percent owned captain um, up when uh, we're doing a show. Uh, but like I, I love Luis Perez and um, he's probably going to be the optimal. Uh, but look, Sal Canella, I, I really think that he's priced very well. If you're not comfortable with these 1K dudes, he's going to give you the flexibility to kind of have a more balanced roster construction. Um, and if you are comfortable with a 1K dude like Cameron Harris, you're going to be able to build whatever the fuck you want. So uh, I like Sal Canella. Um, I think Luis Perez is just going to feed him and um i i think that's really their path to victory uh they're going to be consistent with sal canella if not they're they're probably not going to win and and scott we, you know we talked about uh perez probably being half the price of Teamu, and i don't see uh, you know if you played this game a hundred times i don't see perez like getting beat out at the captain spot nearly as much as half you know so i really do think there's a little bit of leverage there and Perez could absolutely score, you know, three three passing touchdowns and throw for three hundred yards. Um, I, obviously, you agree with me on that. What, what are some other reasons to, to to throw Perez as the captain? And how many like pass catchers do you need to put in the flex with him? So Perez is not a guy you want to play naked. Tiamo, you could play naked, of course, but Tiamo has, like I said, the 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 Dier King situation. I don't think Perez has that. So I think Perez has just a safer. I, I think he's just, he's just a safer play, but he's just been. He's coming around, man. If you watch these last couple games, I mean, he he's doing it. I think he was just, you know, we saw it in Vegas. Uh, he was clearly the better quarterback. The yeah. coach knew it. Everybody else knew it. We wanted it to be Hundley so bad for us DFS guys, yep, but yep. it was Perez. He was a better quarterback. Let's be honest about it. And uh, he's got multiple weapons, so that's where it gets tricky. You cannot play him naked, but nailing a guy like Canella, Van Der Esch, uh, I, mean, I mean, we can go on. Arcanada, you know, Vons. I mean, Winningham always seems to come up when you don't want him, when no one owns yeah. Winningham. And, like, like, here's the crazy fact. Not a single person, not a single person played Peyton in the captain spot last, that that big blow-up game. Not a single person. Wow. Not a single one. Yeah. So, you know, the, he's got too many weapons. So, you know, in my opinion, you're going to have to take some shots on guys you're maybe uncomfortable with, but I, I say go with the cheaper guy. That's why I like Van Der Esch. Yeah. That's, that's my pair. But Canella is the safe guy. If you want to play safe, go uh, Perez Canella. If you want to get a little risky, I, I say go Perez Van Der Esch. And go I, I, any of these guys, like literally like any one of these pass catchers. We talked about it last week. The key to the slate is these these pass catchers for Arlington, specifically the wide receivers. All right, let's get into our fades here. We couldn't do diddly poo. All right, so Ellie, you're you're not so, so locking dudes in quotations. What, what do you mean here? Yeah, man, I'm not going to have 100% of anybody. Um, I'm going to be under on uh, literally the guys that you have listed here and some of the people that we talked about on the show. But even then, like, I'm not I'm not committed to fading anybody 100%. If I have 6K left or something where Javante Payton fits into my, uh, my game script, I'm probably going to have a little bit of exposure to him. Um, we've seen it all year long. Uh, you know, these one person could ruin everything for everyone. And I'm just not, I, I have zero intention of playing just the cash optimal build to chop it up with, you know, 400 fucking people. So yeah. I'm just gonna do what I can here, man. Yeah. So, so Scott, for, for those of, for, for those viewers that are skipping around maybe and didn't catch what we talked about earlier with Jonathan Payton, 
it feels like, you know, it's risky. It's scary because what if he is that guy? What if he is the dude? Uh, and he goes off for another two touchdowns. That's that's terrifying. But on paper, it's just not a good play, especially considering if you think that he's going to be high-owned, which I think he probably will be. I don't know. It's hard to tell. But talk to me about why you're wanting to fade Javante. One, I don't like his price. Uh, I don't think one game deserves that. I mean, he started the season off with Orlando. He showed some flashes. They got rid of him. Arlington picked him up. He's just kind of found his footing in one game, really, in my opinion. So uh, there's so many weapons there. I just I don't think I'm going to pay six grand in the flex spot and nine thousand in the ca- uh, captain spot for him. And recency bias. I think he's going to be highly owned. I think if people watch that game and you know box score watch, they're going to pick him. And I'm full fading Javante Payton. Go with Christ, bro. I I I I want <laughs> I want to do it too. I just don't know if I have the balls for that. Uh, well, look, I'm already going to do something stupid here, probably. There's a reason why I have burning money here as the background. Abram Smith, <laughs> in the flex to me, um, I don't think it's a, it, I don't think it's it's a good spot for him. It's not a good matchup. Um, his paths to scoring multiple touchdowns involve long touchdown runs, like 95th percentile type plays. And I just don't see it happening against this defense. And he could get vultured on by like three different folks um four potentially so you know in the red zone at the goal line he's not guaranteed to get that to get the ball you could have dr king you could have cameron harris you could have uh Te'amu keep it to me he's got to score two touchdowns and get 50 50 plus yards to kind of pay off that 10.8 i think 10.6 or 10.8 something like that um so do this at your own risk i'm probably going to throw him in the captain spot like let's say he's 10 percent owned in the captain spot Maybe I'm 15% owned or 20% owned, and then I just fade him in the flex. And, and that in, instantly makes me so, so much different. And if he sucks, those 10 to 15% of lineups, well, who cares? They're done for anyways. Um, anything else to add here, or do you want to just get into these lineup builds? Ellie, what do you think? Let's do it. All right, so let's build some lineups first. Before we do this, obviously, you guys should join the Discord. Um, it's free. Just hop in there. We're all in there talking. Uh, we got a lot of folks in there, you know, typing up a lot of paragraphs about XFL. There's a lot of content in there. And especially if there's any um, if there's any news, you know, hour and a half beforehand, we're already thinking about how to how how to pivot. And there's like 10 dudes who, who are already thinking about that. So jump into that Discord. It's free. You can uh, click down below in the description. But what I want to do here first before we get too crazy is I want um, I want Scott to talk to me about some of these graphics he made. These are incredible graphics. So let's start with um, let's start with DC defenders here. So Scott, talk to me about what this is and what are we looking at here? Yeah, so this is a, a compilation of every single uh, showdown slate the DC defenders have been in, and these are the guys who actually showed up in the true optimal lineup. So you can see that Tiamu is just way ahead of the pack. So basically the red represents the captain and the white represents how many times they showed up in the flex. And this is out of 11 game sample. So you can see Tiamu has showed up in the flex nine out of 11 games and was a captain in one of them. So only one time has he not been in the optimal lineup. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. And, and, uh, to me, it just goes to prove like you don't need to get cute with Teamo unless he gets unless he hurts his leg or something, which we can't control. Just play him in the flex at minimum. Put him in some captain lineups. Who else jumps out to here? What about this Abram Smith? I mean, this is kind of what I was talking about. Like he's captain or bust almost, right? I mean, what is that? It, it, it was is he in two like about two lineups as the optimal captain? There is that what I'm looking at? That is correct. Yeah. Now, if if you want to break that down, uh, if we all remember the Las Vegas game, Tyson will remember that game. He was the captain there. It was raining. And yeah. then he was the captain in the St. Louis game where yep. he went absolutely nuclear. Ape shit, yeah. So those are two times. But but again, um, yes, that that is two times in the captain, two times in the flex. So it seems to me Lucky Jackson, Abram Smith, Te- uh, Jordan Te'amu, these are these are guys that obviously you want to focus on in, in the captain spot and, and everybody. I mean, this is this is a one game sample here. Uh, th- this data is incredibly good, but feel it out. Do what you feel is best. Let's look at let's look at Renegades here. Uh, what are we seeing here? What jumps out to you, Scott, when you when you put this together? Uh, Devion Smith. I mean, he he's he's the. It seems like he's the team when you really think about it on a fancy wise. Now. 
this is a little skewed because Luis Perez didn't step in until half a week eight and then into week nine. So Perez looks identical to Tiamu if you actually just did it over 11 game sample. Yeah. Um, so for me, Devion Smith renegades defense and Luis Perez really stand out. And if you just take the, the plit slower, you know, you could just give that to Luis Perez essentially. Um, they look really good, but you can also see how everybody else kind of shows up evenly. Um, you know, the Letty Browns, the Van Der Esch's, the kicker, the the backup, the third string running back, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's pretty spread out uh, uh, there. But again, you can kind of see the team is. And like, again, these are the only times these players showed up in the true optimal lineup. So uh, yeah. it's, it, it is something to look at. And like I said, the quarterbacks, again, this really leans towards both quarterbacks being in the optimal. Yeah, so uh, Scott also put together an awesome Excel sheet where he, you basically broke down every single showdown slate that that these teams have played, right? What's in that Excel sheet? The ownership um, and whether or not they made the true optimal. So the ownership is the most important thing to look at because you can kind of see where the field goes from week to week on a showdown slate. It's very different. Uh, looking ownership than say the four gamer or the two gamer. So when you look at the Excel sheet, you can kind of break down, Oh, uh, this person scored this many fantasy points. So you can see the ownership jump. And when someone scores a dud, people abandon the, that person. So it's, it's very uh, different than most sports where say NBA, if uh, D'Anthony Milton has a bad game, we all jump on him, you know, the next day saying, Oh, he's going to be good off the bat. It, it, it's very similar to that uh, in, in this, but it, you'll see drastic, drastic ownership slides. So it's really important to pay attention to the ownership from week to week, especially with both teams. So it's both teams, all 11 games, every single showdown slate they participated in. You can see their ownership, their fantasy points, and whether or not they made the optimal lineup or not. Yeah, if you guys jump into that Discord, I'm sure Scott would be willing to share that with everybody uh, just as a, a, a just to check things out before you start yeah. building. All right, let, let's actually yeah, start building. Let's start building now. So what do we want to do? Let's do you want to build like a I know this is showdown. It's it's a little bit harder to build like a cashy type build, but let's try to build like the like high ownership, like cashy type build that you would do in the 222 potentially. You don't have to obviously give away your exact lineup, but early in the week at this point with no news, where are we going here? You gotta go Tiamu a captain with this, right? Yeah, probably. I think he's probably gonna be the chalkiest captain. Let's start with him. All right, so where do we go now? Like, you probably want to put Perez in. You probably want to put Abram Smith in here, right? Uh, can we afford to, like, get a get a Devion Smith here and then just punt a couple times? I don't know. What, what, where, do you, where do we go here, Scott, from here? Uh, we probably can't play Devion Smith. You probably got to play one of these one of these pass catchers for DC probably, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, typical cash builds are going to be both quarterbacks, both running backs to try to sew up all the points, of course. Uh, in this, it makes it tricky because you're left with about 2400 per player after that um, if you get both running backs and both quarterbacks. So, you know, it might be a situation where, um, I mean, Perez doesn't give you an extreme amount of savings if you put him in the captain spot. Yeah. Uh, it's about 1200 So you get about 2600 per player if you go both running backs. So, yeah, you're going to have to kind of um, either play with the DC guys. I mean, I'm sorry, play with the Arlington receivers, the cheaper guys, or you got to consider fading Abraham Smith. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's a tough call. It, it's hard. They're expensive uh, when you really look at it. Let's try to let's try to build with Devi on here, and let's see what happens. And then maybe we put Perez a captain here instead. So uh, right off the bat, we're obviously going to go with Cameron Harris. Probably, I know this is a cash build, but hey, treat it like the NBA, man. Some of these are just free squares almost. And him him paying off that thousand bucks, you don't need him to score thirty fantasy points. You need him to probably score like ten. You know, get a touchdown and a couple receptions potentially. Now we're at 3800 bucks. And for cash, a zero is not going to kill you. A zero is not going to kill you, realistically. I mean, if he gets you five fantasy points, you might still be fine. Um, so now we're stuck with Van Der Esch, Winningham, and these tight ends. Did we screw ourselves here? Is this not like... Is, this is there's, there's too many like craziness here at the bottom, or are you okay with something like this, Scott? I mean, I'm definitely okay with it. I don't think for cash. I think I'm okay with it for GPPs. For cash, it's it's yeah. it's it's a difficult build. I, I've tried every which way to do the standard, typical cash build. Um, 
I mean, if you want to swoop up all the points, you'd swap out Harris for Russellini yeah. uh, or Russellino. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, you know, go with a, a Van Der Escher, a Winningham, um, but, uh, or go with both kickers. Uh, um, but in my opinion, you're going to have to, in the cash build, if you want to play a quarterback at the captain, you're going to have to fade one of the stud running backs or one of the quarterbacks. Let's try this. Instead of Devion, what would you guys be cool with Canella here in a cash build? Yep. Let's try that. Yes. So that leaves us now let's let's go Russellino here. And that leaves us with 48. Does that do anything for us? It gets us a defense. Are you are you, I mean, I'm not I'm not against a defense in in, in this particular situation because you're probably going to get four or five fantasy points out of them. Is that enough? Does that make you want to do it? I don't mind DC defenders in this build, particularly. This is a three-three with Tayama the captain. It's tough. I, like I don't even know if I'm going to play the two-two-two this week because I just don't. It's it feels like a tournament build to me. You know, um, uh, are you going to play the two-two-two this week, Scott? Definitely yes. But I'm yeah. gonna I'm going to go different at captain. So I'm going to put all four of the guys in flex and go different at the captain spot. Yeah, that's probably the way to do it. All right, so, you know, jump into Discord. As we get closer, if we get some news, maybe we'll kind of, like, talk about some of our builds here. But let's start building tournament lineups because this is where the fun comes in. So do you want to build – let's not even build with Teamu as a tournament captain here. Let's go different because we don't have all night to do this. Who do you want to build with Ellie here first? Do you want to start building with with our individual captains that we chose? Do you want to go Canela here? Let's just start with Luis Perez. I mean, all right. uh, it's the next logical one. All right, Luis Perez – uh, Teamu in the flex, guaranteed. I'm fading Abram Smith here um, in this Agreed. lineup. Let's do that. Now, in, in that case, we got to get like like a Lucky Jackson or, or one of these guys, right? I mean, you know, Hammond even? Like, I'm going to leave this up to you, Scott. What do you think we put here with Teamu? I, I mean, I think if we fade Abraham Smith, let's throw Harris in there just because I think it's going to yep. be an obvious pivot because I think if Abraham Smith gets hurt or is just not playing up to par, I think this Harris guy... Uh, could vulture some touchdowns. So I would go with Harris there, and that frees up some salary. Now now we're looking pretty good. All right, so I think Lucky Jackson, since we have some salary, let's see what happens if we put Lucky Jackson in here. Now we've got, we've got. I mean, this is a this is a good situation for a 2-4 with Perez and one other dude in the flex. Maybe we go Canela here. Uh, do you have another you guy? You can go Canela and Peyton. You can go Canela and Peyton and have that nice little Luis Perez stack. You could, yeah, you could, you could do that. Uh, you could also go, yeah. I guess I guess you'd have to go down to like def- defenders defense or Brandon Smith. So it's a little bit weirder there, but like that fits perfectly. That's nice. Uh, you got Teamu. Yeah, Harris, that's a good Jackson. looking lineup. That's a good looking lineup. Yeah, that's good. Let's. Do, <laughs> I'll probably play it. I'll play yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, Canella captain. Let's try. Let's try that. Oops. Canella captain. See how these builds actually work out. So Canella captain. Teamu. Um, Luis Perez. We're going to do that in almost, that's our core there. We get those two guys. Uh, is this an Abram Smith lineup? Do we want to build one with him and see how impossible it is? Let's just do it. Let's just try it. All right, so 7,500 for two spots. Uh, where do we go here, man? Like, so we've got Canella at the captain with Perez. Do we do a 2-4? Um, do we leave some money on the table? Uh, where are you going, Ellie? What, what, else, what else can we get from Washington at this at uh, this price, what, what do we have? Um, well, so if otherwise, you to, we're looking at Cameron Harris and what if, maybe. If you wanted to punt, I, I don't even know if that's enough for Hammond. If you wanted to punt it with Cameron Harris here, you got sixty five hundred bucks, so you can go another one of these Arlington dudes, or pay down for defenders defense, uh, or you know you're gonna have to get weird. Like I, I like if you if you were to play this lineup and you put Vaughn's in, that's a duped lineup. I don't care how how crazy it is. Like I, it's going to get duped at least once. So you probably want to go down a little bit. You could play Arcanado, Peyton, Vaughn's. It's probably a smarter build. But going down to defenders' defense with Cadell and the captain could be an interesting build. It, see, with with Abram Smith, it's it's not fun. <laughs> Uh, you do have the, the handcuff here and and Canella at captain, so you're getting a little bit of help there with with the uniqueness. Um, but there's going to be a lot of interesting ways to build. Uh, Scott, are you hand building all these? I know we've talked about this in the past. It feels like it's better to hand build for showdown for XFL, right? Definitely, definitely hand building. 
All right, let's get a crazy cap. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the optimizer show me the way at first, and then I'll try to get away from that, actually. So it's kind of like when you build, you optimize, say, uh, say 300 lineups, you kind of toss the first 20, 50 away automatically. So I'm definitely going to avoid that. But uh, yeah, hand building is the way to go for showdown in XFL. What kind of what kind of crazy captain do we want to do here? Um, like uh, Hammond, do you want to do Lucky Jackson, Debbie on Smith? Uh, Scott, you name it. Let's do it. I'm going Vanderish. Oh, I love it, dude. That's the kind of cra- <laughs> that's the kind of crazy shit we're gonna do on this show. If you've ever watched our NFL shows, we're doing crazy ass shit like this all the time. Um, let's do it, Vanderish, Captain. We can pretty much do whatever the hell we want at this point. Uh, hang on, where the hell is this guy? How much is he? Uh, Vanderish. He's, he's he's 3k in the flex so he's 4500 as a character. there he is sorry my bad all right so let's let's just jam in the dudes Teamu perez do you want to go abram smith here let's should we try it we got enough salary we can do whatever the hell we want probably do we want debbie on smith this is this is your vision yeah. here scott what do you think yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the line I like the best. When you throw Smith in there, it gives you a lot of options after that, I think, in that nice little 5K uh, to, uh, you know, e- even – I like to leave money on the table. So, like, you can go as low as Harris here and leave 4700 on the table, and I think that's what it's going to take to get different. Um, but, I mean – You've got from Arcanado all the way down. So I like this build a lot. It doesn't have to be Vander Esch. You can swap Vander Esch out with Arcanado, Brandon Smith, Peyton Vons, whoever you really want. I mean, I, I just think there's there's some different build, builds you can go with here in the captain spot. And I think you got to get different because I think everybody's going to go Perez. Perez, I mean, Perez and Tiamu. Perez is my guy. I think he's he, he's the best player on the slate, but um, I think you got to get different at captain. And this is a perfect situation. If you love this core here, you love the captain, and you love all the the flex pieces, you can get ten lineups out of this by just rotating out that last spot. You know, um, this is like a this is a fun build. Vander Esch, you're probably gonna be one percent owned. Don't go entering this in the two 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 or anything like that. I mean, maybe maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> um, all right, so. Now that we've built, we've looked at all the salaries. I know Ellie and I, you, you, we did a, a live show. Was it a live show? Yeah, it was a live show earlier this uh, last week talking about like our first look. Now that we've done the full show here, Ellie, what's jumping out to you when it comes to these builds? Things we need to look out for, things we need to avoid. And how do you feel overall? I mean, it seems like relatively easy to build, right, Ellie? Yeah, man. Um, look, I think we're just in a, uh, an interesting territory where I think people are going to uh, lock their ownership into some of the high high price just guys that people know their names and Abram Smith is one of those guys like I think you actually convinced me throughout the show that I'm probably just not going to fucking play him um, it's <laughs> awkward building with him <laughs> and to be quite honest with you I'd rather just play goddamn Lucky Jackson so yeah, you know I, I I don't know that's what I've learned I'm not playing Abram Smith Scott Tradamus what are your takeaways here after we've built and done a whole show on this He's right about Abraham Smith being kind of uh, an odd fit. Um, he he kind of screws every lineup you want to do up. Uh, and with with uh, Cameron there sitting in the in, in the wings, I, I I think he's he is an easy fade. I mean, you definitely want to get some exposure to him. And if you're going to, might as well get it to him at captain, in my yeah. opinion. But, oh yeah. Um, yeah. I. I uh, like I said, I think this is going to be a really good game. The last time they played, it was really good. I think both teams have had two weeks to prepare. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Yeah, because if look, if Abram Smith only hits, you know, 12 fantasy points and this this hits the 48 total, I don't really know if he's going to be in the optimal. Like, so to me, like throwing him at captain if he goes nuclear and then just kind of forgetting about him maybe in the flex, maybe a couple builds. That's that's how I'm going to treat it. It's risky. We're playing. XFL showdown. It's all risky. So I'm going to embrace it. <laughs> I think that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, all right, Scott, anything else to talk about here? Ellie, anything else to talk about? Join the Discord, right? That's pretty much all we got to talk about, right? Join that Discord. Uh, well, no, one last thing. Thanks, thanks everybody, for sticking with us. Uh, you know, uh, watching XFL showdown. We know you're degenerates if you're sitting here with us watching the ship for an hour with us. So thanks for doing it. Um, we're going to keep trying to put out content. Hop in the Discord so you guys can just tell us what you want. We're fucking gamblers. If you want to gamble on fucking Wimbledon or badminton, we'll do it. WNBA. <laughs> there you go. League of Legends. Yeah, we appreciate you guys for watching this season. Um, it's been a it's been a fun season. Um, seeing that the NFL was ending, and we're like, what the hell are we gonna do, Ellie? Like, how are we gonna put out content? 
this worked out perfectly. Um, I think most of us that, that have been really hard at this have been profitable over this season. Uh, the last few weeks for me have not been great, but I'm gonna try to finish this, this season out on top and try to at least profit this week. That's my goal. I, I, like my goal is not to win. I just wanna, I, I'm trying to profit, all right? Uh, all right, guys, we will see you guys later. Uh, best ball drafts coming up. We're degenerates. We're going to be doing that a lot this summer. So hang out with us there, and uh, we will see you guys later. Throw us a like on the way out of here. Let's try to get 50 likes on this video. We appreciate you guys. See you later.